In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen. And family, it was Wednesday. I started out by saying you're going to get your money's worth. And it was like 12 pages long. Today's a little shorter. It won't be 32 minutes. Uh, but I think you'll still get your money's worth. In family, at 9.35 this morning, I was in a bit of a panic. There were so many thoughts going through my head, but nothing really coherent, nothing particular to point to. So I prayed again, as I always do, again and again. Well, not my words, Lord, but yours. And still there was nothing. No, I would be, and I have been, the first to admit that anything holy ever spoken in these teaching sermons was, is, and always will be. All glory be to God. So I sat there pondering, oh, come, Lord. I'm help. As I sat there pondering and reading again uh, sacred scripture of today in those little pamphlets that I hand out, I looked at the prayer called The Secret. And The Secret is that silent prayer the priest prays just before the preface. You never hear me say it because it's a secret. Uh, you have to follow along with those little worship aids, to know what I'm praying about. Did you know when the priest is done praying the secret, because the last words he proclaims out loud, per omnia secula seculorum, and you all say, Amen. Today's secret really struck me. May thy sacraments, O Lord, be our safeguard, and ever defend us against the attacks of the evil one. These words immediately move my mind and soul to, and I'm not beating a dead horse, to the devastating effects of the lockdown and the lockout. How can we ever get over that? How about we do not get over it? How about if we constantly remind ourselves that the bishops betrayed and abandoned us so that we realize how they have abdicated their positions as shepherds of the Catholic Church? Dear family, let us never forget this. Forget what they did to us. And keep it front and center in our minds so that we recognize their lack of authority. And so that we realize we cannot rely upon any but a few to teach us the truths of the faith. Especially the obvious ones like today's secret. May the sacraments O oh Lord, be our safeguard. And they stole them from us. And never defend us against the attacks of the evil one. We were left defenseless. Do you get this? We were left defenseless. If we do not receive our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist, we do not have life within us. Jesus said it. They stole it from us. Which got me to thinking then about the lies upon lies issuing out of Rome, like just this week's official papal document signed by Bergoglio with the date BCE. I don't know if you saw it or not. BCE, which stands for Before the Common Era, which is a direct slap in the face of Jesus. Might as well just, might as well, just well have been that guard at Jesus' trial that slapped him upside the face. To put your name as vicar, well, he's not vicar of Christ, is he? He denied that himself. He threw that out to the historical dustbin. To say B.C. instead of B.C., before Christ. Direct slap in the face of Jesus. Yet there was Bergoglio signing a document with BCE before common area, not BC before Christ, because he doesn't believe in him. You gotta figure this one out. He doesn't believe. If he if he believed, he'd be scared. He'd be eternally frightened to dare to put BCE on an official papal document next to his signature. Oh. The connected dots, dear family. There's so many dots. They're like, there's so many dots, they've already connected themselves. There's so many dots. 
Bergoglio goes against the longtime standard of the entire world for people of the Catholic faith and pounds us yet again with his personal opinion, with the first church of his own highly exalted opinion, putting BCE, which is why, and why people, I, why, it, why, yet people wonder why. I repeatedly say, Bergoglio is not Catholic, which is why he is not the Pope any more than the Dalai Lama. So when are we going to throw him out, figuratively and actually, from his diabolical presence in the Vatican? Who has the guts to even say that? Certainly not the cronies he puts in power. His cronies, like McCarrick, like McCarrick's roommate for six years, Kevin Farrell. Do you know this? If you, if you want to shake in your boots, he puts Kevin Farrell as Carmelengo in charge of the next election. McCar Farrell was McCarrick's roommate for six years and said that Sergeant Schultz phrase, I saw nothing. When are we going to connect the dots? Well, let us first review then, in light of all this, what is an infallible teaching of the Catholic Church and then compare that to another diabolical statement by Bergoglio just this past week on what he says his opinion is that standing up against and refusing aid and assistance to illegal invading immigrants is great sin. That's a bald-faced lie, dear family, and damnably bears false witness against the Catholic faith. In other words, Bergoglio is a liar, a filthy liar. Well, firstly, in light of the fact that next Sunday, September 8th, would be the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, except it's, it's a Sunday, let us review once again the glorious language of the infallible declaration of the Immaculate Conception, of her Immaculate Conception. And as you hear these words, keep them. Keep them. Don't just bask in them like, and let it go in one ear and out the other. No, keep them at the forefront of your mind. We then will compare this dogmatic infallible language with the personal opinion of Jorge Bergoglio. So here we have it. This is what it's supposed to sound like. If you speak the truth of the Catholic Church, if you speak to something and dare to call it grave sin, you better begin your words with this. And if you don't, then you're a liar. So this is the infallible language of the Immaculate Conception. Accordingly, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, for the honor of the holy and undivided Trinity, for the glory and adornment of the Virgin Mother of God, for the exaltation of of the Catholic faith and for the furtherance of the Catholic religion by the authority of Jesus Christ our Lord of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul and by our own we declare pronounce and define that the doctrine which holds that the most blessed Virgin Mary in the first instance of her conception by a singular grace and privilege granted by Almighty God in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the human race, was preserved free from all stain of original sin, is a doctrine revealed by God, and therefore to be believed firmly and constantly by all the faithful. Hence, if anyone shall dare, which God forbid, to think otherwise than has been defined by us, let him know and understand that he is condemned by his own judgment." that he has suffered shipwreck in the faith, that he is separated from the unity of the church, and that, furthermore, by his own action, he incurs the penalties established by law if he should dare to express in words or writing or by any other outward means the errors he thinks in his heart. There you have it. Beautiful, incredible, profound words of doctrine, of dogma, of inf fallible teaching as to one particular issue the immaculate conception but understand if those words apply with equal force and effect to every bit of catholic dogma every bit of the dogma of the deposit of faith which is why the dogmatic council of trent issued 151 count them 151 anathemas. Let them be accursed for going against the dogmatic teaching of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Well, this week, 
Keeping all that in mind, this week we were also bludgeoned by the godless globalist heathen that apostate to the Catholic faith, yes, Bergoglio, when he dared to raise his personal opinion on immigration to the level of defining grave sin. Saying that failing to aid migrants is not just a sin, but a grave sin. <coughs> but Bergoglio was railing against Italy and others who are sick and tired of the invasion of criminal illegals. The European citizens have had it with the globalist governments foisting upon them, the hard-working, tax-paying citizens, not just the bill to pay full price for these leeches on public dole. Look what California's doing. Oh, we're going to give you free Medicare. We're going to give you free health care. We're going to give you free education. How stupid are the people of California? Or how stupid do the leaders in California think we are? Because you know full well nothing's free. Somebody's paying for it. And who's that? Oh, yeah, that's you, the middle class taxpayers. There's nothing free. When you hear a politician say, we're going to give you something for free, understand that is, that's bearing false witness. That's the eighth commandment. Right? It's, it's number eight. That's damnable in God's eyes. Do you understand this? When a politician says he's going to give you something for free, it's a filthy, diabolical lie. Just, just over here a couple weeks ago in Michigan, the governor and I think the head of Department of Education with the state of Michigan said, we are now going to offer, we're going to give to every single public school student in this state free breakfast and free lunch. That's a filthy lie. They're not free. Unlike manna that fell in the desert, his food comes from somewhere and somebody's paying for it. It's you. And they justified their position. One of them said, uh, well, I remember the chaos of feeding the children in the morning. Look how they controlled the language. They called feeding your children chaos. Therefore, oh, let's not have chaos in your home. Let the government feed your children. Dear family, that is that is rank, Marxist, godless, damned communism. Let the government do your job. Well, you struggle feeding your children. Oh, it's chaos. Okay. You know, I see families with lots of children. I think, I've been there. I've seen chaos in and we give glory to Almighty God for such chaos. If only everybody would give glory to God for the chaos of feeding their children in the morning. Yet there's the governor of the state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, godless and damned as she is, saying what she said. Well, the European citizens have had it with the globalist government, forcing upon them, the hardworking taxpayers, the, the price of paying for these leeches on the public dole. But also their utter failure to vet these leeches for their criminal backgrounds and the resultant criminal violence against the citizens in Italy. In, they've just said, that, oh, well, we don't have guns in, in England, you know, or Ireland. Oh, but you, what you do have is knives. And you saw the knife attacks that have been taking place on a regular basis. It's not the guns. It's not the knives. I think it was Samuel L. Jackson, a wonderful man. Uh, the quote, if I, if I have this right now, is he said, we don't have a gun problem in America. So I grew up in, he says, I grew up in Texas where we, everybody had their guns. It's not a gun problem. It's a, it's a failure to respect life problem. And until you change the morality of the people's thinking, bad people will use guns to do bad things, and we are entitled to defend ourselves against them by our Constitution. There's a reason why the Founding Fathers put that in there. Well, with regard to the resultant criminal violence, we've certainly seen it in our own country. And the Marxist, communist, left-wing Democrats, you cannot be a Catholic and a Democrat, period, the end. They are damned by their platform. Damned literally, by their platform. You cannot be a Christian and be a Democrat. Quit pretending you're a Christian, by the way. 47,000 different denominations out there, you're frauds. If you believe in Christ enough to call yourself a Christian, then you darn well better believe everything that Jesus said, including John chapter 6, the bread of life discourse. 
including all the other teaching, such as contraception and cohabitation. You better believe in that. And if you don't, you're not a Christian. You're a fake, you're a fraud, and you'll pay in the end eternally. Well, about this criminal violence against citizens, we've certainly seen it in our own country where the Marxist Democrats use every incident of violence committed by illegals to take from us citizens our constitutional right to own and bear arms. Ironic, isn't it? In Colorado, this is past week, violent Venezuelan gangs, illegal immigrants, have taken over, if I got this right now, fact check me on it, have taken over two sets of apartments. And the news story read, if even the news can be fully believed, in fact, if it's the left-wing media that's saying it, you know they're minimizing it. They're not telling us the fullness of the truth because we'd be enraged. Anyway, the news story said that the police are helpless against these Venezuelan gangs. They're not going into those apartment buildings. Somebody was moving out from the whole neighborhood because he says, I can't live here anymore with my family. It's too dangerous. There were bullet holes in my car. Yet, our police force apparently is helpless against them, which is ironic because the FBI and the police can send 25 SWAT team members to arrest an unarmed father of seven little children. Mr. Houck, who is defending his little boy from an actual assault. How about we send 25 SWAT team to one of those apartment buildings? How about we do that? How about we send a message to every illegal criminal by sending the SWAT team to the apartment buildings and say, who's next? Because we're done with you. Ironically, the FBI can send 30 SWAT team and SEAL types swimming through the waters to arrest an elderly Roger Stone. Remember, his wife is old too. And she's deaf. And suddenly, she looks up and she sees two SWAT team members pointing big rifles at her. Oh, we can manage to do that, can't we, Merrick Garland, you damned, filth, communist, Marxist, globalist that you are. How dare you stand before Congress and say, oh, that was a local decision. As if you don't have authority and control over just that activity. How about you send the FBI out there in uh, Colorado? How about you send them to the apartment buildings, Merrick Garland? Send a memo, Merrick Garland. Ironic, isn't it? Somehow raging violent gangs are beyond the capacity of our police force to protect us. You know, our government has two things. Protect us. I forget what the other one is. <laughs> Primarily, it's to protect and defend us. And do something for the common good, like, okay, roads. To protect us. If they can't protect us, what good are they? And yet they're not. Dear family, never forget the Second Amendment, the right to own and bear arms, specifically was required by the founders before they would even sign the Constitution. Because they knew what we seem to not know, that we have to protect ourselves against useless government. It wasn't so that we could go out and shoot deer and have dinner. No. It was specifically so we could protect ourselves against the government. It is interesting to note that, in fact, Hitler passed a law in 1938. Now, I, was I did my research this morning, and I always did think that he actually did say the way to take over a country, to take over the people, is to disarm them. Apparently, from several different sources, he didn't say it quite like that. But what he did do is he passed a law in 1938 giving the Nazis the right to bear arms, but took them away from non-favored minorities. This is the same principle, isn't it? The same thing. Let's take guns away from Catholics. Because we're, we're terrorists, you know. Traditional Catholics especially, we're the terrorists. It sounds funny, doesn't it? But understand, dear family, that's exactly what they're thinking. As to immigration, dear family, you need to understand the truth that the United States has never stood against legal immigration. We have let people in millions per year. Legally, there's a process. There's no such thing as wide open doors to any country, doors to any country in this world, or there would be no countries, which is what the globalists want, right? One world government. We are, in the United States, however, and according to the catechism in the Catholic Church, 
we are, in the real teaching of the Catholic Church, we are rightfully, properly, justifiably, and morally against the damned invasion by the illegals and what has happened over the last three and a half years under the democratic policies. We are rightfully, properly, justifiably, and morally against the damn invasion by illegals, and that is the teaching of the Catholic Church. No matter what Jorge Bergoglio says, he's a liar. We are against it, just as Italy, England, Ireland, France, and other countries rightfully, properly, justifiably, and morally can stand up against Bergoglio's personal opinion and his damned Marxist globalist agenda. You know what I just saw, and I was going to include it in this, and I ran out of time. He had a little meeting with a bunch of uh, community organizers in Rome. I think it was just this week. From it was, a south, it was a southwest area on the map as I was reading it. That's, what it. that's what came to mind in my understanding of it. And they were proudly proclaiming that they were community organizers. Do you remember in 2008... Obama's claim to the presidency, why he was fully capable of taking on the job of the presidency of the United States of America was that he was a community organizer. Nobody asked what that was really. What does that even look like? What does that mean? What is that? Except what we do know now is there's a Saul Alinsky communist program to make us, make us Marxist communists, godless and damned Marxist communists. That's what Obama was. He would go door to door spreading communism. And he did so for eight years, flying around in a 747 paid for by us hardworking taxpayers. And there's Bergoglio with a bunch of big photo op, all these very important community organizers. The last 10 popes have completely, utterly, and wholly condemned Communism, Marxism, Socialism. Condemned it. And there's Bergoglio with a bunch of communist socialists. Dear family, the problem for you and me is too big of a problem for you and me to solve. Only Almighty God can fix this. And I was reading one of the Psalms today. Because, you know, the, the Psalms aren't... Somebody's made a mistake on the number. Because in this... Is Psalm 39 was in here, and I said, that sounds like Psalm 40. So sure enough, I went and looked at the NAB, and it is Psalm 40. Uh, but it's Psalm 39 in here, but the Lord listened to my cry, bent down, and helped out. God has to fix this. Only he can. And until he tells any one of us to pick up our sling and take on Goliath, I, I hope he doesn't do that. <laughs> But he could, until he, but until he does, until he calls us to pick up our sling and take on Goliath, our, our calling is to keep the faith no matter what. The true faith. And not the personal opinions of Jorge Bergoglio. And we have the strength to keep the faith. Now watch, I'm wrapping it all up in a nice little bow. We have the strength to keep the faith when we receive the sacraments, just as today's secret prayer specifically puts it, may Thy sacraments, O Lord, be our safeguard and ever defend us against the attacks of the evil one. In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti. Amen.